after this came the Holy Spirit when Jesus was uh, resurrected from the dead after his death which pays the price for our sin literally purchased us out of this world atoned for our sin and uh, hallelujah even according to the Bible according to the Quran Surah 355, Surah 1933 these are things that speak of Jesus' death and resurrection hallelujah so this is what happened and now we're commanded God commands us all everywhere to repent of our sin and turn to him with all our hearts serve him with all our hearts, mind and strength hallelujah he is a very gracious God, a loving God he wants to empower us over the kingdom of darkness there is such a thing it brings sin, disease, temptation all of that comes through the choices that we make hallelujah and uh, not every one of our choices are right it's very true that means that we sin that means we sin before God with broken commandments we've lied, we've stolen we've broken at least one of the ten commandments probably every week hallelujah so according to all the Bible it, it, it talks about when sin is brought into fruition it brings death but Jesus Christ came to give us forgiveness Jesus came to give us grace in order that you might uh, impute us with his righteousness and this is when someone repents of their sin and they just want forgiveness from God and Jesus says I am the way, the truth, the life no man comes to, to God except through me of course it's a very very powerful statement very very powerful statement take Jesus on his word you can't say that you think Jesus is a prophet or this or that without taking him on his word even in the Quran Surah 1933 his very words blessed is the day I die blessed is the day I'll be resurrected from the dead so you've got to take a prophet on his word to actually prove that he is a prophet you must do that you can't even be a Catholic and say well I believe in Jesus why do you still pray to Mary you know the Bible is very very clear maybe when we repent we come to God we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through him. Hallelujah. His name means salvation and deliverer. You know that God sent a deliverer to, to deliver his people from their sins. That's what Jesus did for us. And the second time that he comes, he's going to set up his kingdom. You know, I've had various discussions with even Jehovah's Witnesses that say, Jesus' kingdom has been set up. No, it hasn't. It hasn't been set up yet. The last thing Jesus said was, the next time you see me, I shall be in the clouds with the heavenly angels and he'll be judging the earth. That's what he'll be doing. Even according to the Quran, Jesus is the judge of the earth. That's what it says on the law. Also, Surah 355 talks about Jesus' death and resurrection. Hallelujah. So let's go through these scriptures. Let's examine them. If you say that you believe in Jesus, you must believe in what he taught. You must believe in who he is, the only begotten Son of God, born through a virgin, takes away the sin of the world through his sacrifice. Hallelujah. He's the Word of God according to the Bible and the Quran. The Word of God. Not just a prophet, my friend. He's, he's the, the very Son of God, as the apostles declared. And there's no salvation but through him, no way to heaven but through him. No man comes to the Father but through him. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yes, praise Jesus. You know, Jesus said, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. I'm sure you're probably giving to Caesar or whatever what is Caesar's. But are you giving to God what is God's? Which is all your honor, praise and worship, thanksgiving. If you say you believe in God, where's the fruit of that? Where's the mercy? Where's the love towards other human beings? Where's the love towards even yourself? Because nobody who's sinning has a perfect love of God. Because if you're damaging yourself through through drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, you're not having a, a real love and respect for God and for yourself and for other people. Hallelujah. This is why we, another reason you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus promises us eternal life. If we overcome like he overcame, that's what he says in the book of Revelation. Those who overcome 
shall sit with me on my throne. That's a promise from Jesus Christ. So when you're born again, you receive God himself. You don't receive just a bunch of promises, a bunch of, well, maybe in the future if you're a good boy or a good girl. When you repent and you ask Jesus into your life, you get God and that's it, full stop. The power of God comes into your life through his spirit. And you begin to overcome the kingdom of darkness. He gives us grace to overcome, hallelujah. Whether it's financial issues, health issues, whatever it is, social issues, whatever it is, God gives us the grace to overcome all these things. Hallelujah. God wants you to have a, a good life, a long life, an abundant life, a life you can enjoy. But certainly we've got to be realigned with God's will. You know, we've got to stop enjoying the, the things of the flesh, if, if that's possible. Even the Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. But then you end up getting addicted to something, drugs, alcohol, smoking, whatever it is, going out clubbing, whatever your little taste is. And uh, as the Bible says, when sin comes to fruition, it brings death. But Jesus came to give us life in abundance. He came to give us healing for the body, healing for the mind. But he came also to pour out his spirit upon us. Hallelujah. And uh, if you've not experienced that, you know, I've spoken to a lot of Christians, they say they're Christians, and I ask, well, have you received God's spirit? And they're like, what's that? What's, what's that? Well, I mean, you've got to be born again. How do you do that? Confess you're a sinner. Ask Jesus into your life. Get baptized. And then you seek the Holy Spirit baptism, which includes speaking in tongues, it can include nine spiritual gifts. All these things are true. God does not change. His Spirit does not change. The Son of God does not change. Hallelujah. He, he is one who fulfilled the Father's commandments and says that only the ones who are about doing the Father's will shall come into His kingdom as well. Are you about doing God's will or your own will? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again, Surah 355, Surah 1933 talks about Jesus' death and resurrection within the Quran. I'll actually quote it. It says, Jesus, I will cause you to die and I will uh, fight against those who have fought against thee until the day of resurrection. That's what it says. And then Surah 1933, with Jesus' own mouth, blessed is the day I die, blessed is the day I am resurrected from the dead. And so that's the gospel right there, within the Quran. Where is it in the Bible? It's in Isaiah 53, it's uh, in Isaiah 7, and so on, 7.14. Okay, Jesus came, he knew what his mission was, but the second time he's coming to wipe out evil off the face of the earth. Hallelujah. So you better make sure you're in God's sight. You better make sure you're repented of your sin, filled with God's Spirit. Even expecting Jesus to come and be raptured up to meet him in the clouds, as the Bible teaches. Hallelujah. I hope that's your hope within. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, what is your hope? Do you have any hope? You know, what is your hope if you say that you've uh, evolved from a monkey? I don't know. I'm not sure what your hope is, but I know that I have eternal life in Jesus Christ. That's that's my fulfilled hope. I already have that. I don't need to wait or I don't need to be good. I don't need to face a certain direction to pray. I don't I, I don't need that. I'm born again, as the Bible says. Hallelujah. How you doing, brother? It's not Jesus, it's Jesus. Jesus. Because Jesus. Mr. Seuss. I think it's Mr. Seuss. Never the one <laughs> Well, I normally say Yeshua, that's his, that's the closest thing. Praise God, God bless you. So uh, yeah, Yeshua means deliver our salvation. Jesus is the Spanish, we get Jesus in the English. It means that, what? <laughs> well, oh, you don't like my preaching, no? Why not? Jesus is what? So you should know, what, what's the Catholic religion about then? I mean, surely Jesus is uh, the way, the truth, the life. Do you not read the Bible? I mean, well, I've sang a song glorifying Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. What were we saying? What were we saying? Yeshua the Messiah. Yesha Misha, I believe he's referred to in the Vedas. Isa, I think it is in the Quran, but it's, it's really Yeshua, I think is the Hebrew Aramaic. It means deliverer and salvation. Anybody speaking tongues? <laughs> uh, well, well, according to the Apostle Paul, you get earthly tongues and you get heavenly tongues. And so, I've, I've met a few people who've got the spiritual gifts, they can interpret tongues speaking tongues, they can see people getting healed according to the gift of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles. All of these things are still for today. Hallelujah. God is real. God wants a relationship with you. You are his creation. You belong to him. You don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to whoever. You belong to God. Because Jesus purchased you with his own blood out of this world, out of this very, very dark and satanic world. Jesus brought you out of this system and uh, he wants to give you his spirit. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to show you the truth about this creation, what it really is. Hallelujah. There is a heaven, there is a hell. You know, and uh, you know, if you've broken any of God's commandments, sin, lied, stolen, uh, whatever, we deserve the punishment of hell. God is a righteous judge. He sent his son in order to get his grace, in order to pay for the sins, not just of Israel, if they believe and confess their Messiah, but for the whole entire earth. And you got to question, why is Jesus Christ mentioned in all the holy books in the world? Everybody's got an opinion of Jesus. It's in the Quran, in the Bible, the Vedas, everything. Think about it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now that statement alone, if you take him on his word, if you believe who he is, what he stands for, what he taught, you'll have eternal life. If you're skeptical, you may end up following Buddha, who fasted under a fig tree for 30 years and gained 
30 stone, you know. I'm not that gullible, <laughs> basically. I know it's fasting, people have fasted and all of that stuff, but, you know, Jesus fasted 40 days and nights, and uh, Satan tried to give him the kingdoms of the world, tried to give him food, and uh, he rebuked Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. That's how you do it. You don't throw stones at a, an image or throw stones at a wall or a stone. That doesn't do anything to Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom as well as God's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is full of demons tempting people into sin. Which, all that stuff. Speak out through your mouth. Sorry? Speak out through your mouth. I'm sorry. Go for that. Oh, right, go. oh it doesn't work. Yes, it should work. But... Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Very appreciate that very much. Remember, Jesus loves you. Remember, Jesus loves you. you for, don't go to mass. Go to Jesus. Follow Jesus Christ. I wouldn't even say go to churches. Follow Jesus. The Bible says, through Jesus alone we are saved. Faith in Him alone. You know? Doesn't matter if I dress up in a fancy outfit and say that I am God's representative on earth. Doesn't matter. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So I was talking about Satan's kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom, you know. And uh, Jesus came to bind up demons within people. Jesus came to heal the sick. He also rose the dead. Uh, he also did many other things. And he never told his disciples to gather together and fight the Romans and all that. This is a spiritually discerned kingdom that God is in control of. Hallelujah. It even says in the Bible that Satan can't do anything without uh, asking God's permission. You know, Satan doesn't have absolute power. Absolutely not. God is in absolute control. He is absolute power of this universe. It's the choices that we make that are very, very important that uh, end up telling us where our spiritual destiny is. I've, I've heard of a few uh, career officers asking asking you, where will you be in five years or ten years? I, I should have just turned around to them and said, where are you going to be in a hundred years? What about five hundred years? Because according to all the religions, there was an afterlife. Jesus Christ taught on an afterlife. Jesus about the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, all of that stuff. Jesus taught there is an afterlife. There is, after you physically die, spiritually you go to a place you're going to be with God, or you go, you go down to be, to be to a place where there's, God is not there. In fact, Satan, a lot of demons are down there. And uh, there's a few people that have had their testimonies that they've actually went down there and seen what happens down there. It's the last place you want to go. But God wants us to have a love for Him. He didn't create robots. So He wants us to understand how much God loves you. God loves you more than you think. Hallelujah. And so God, you know, this is why God uh, commands all men to repent everywhere. But He does not want you to go to hell. And if you truly, if you truly could see what that is, you, nobody would want to go. Nobody would want to go there. of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ and then it says Peter unto them said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive 
the gift of the Holy Ghost. So as I promise to the Apostle Peter, whom they have in Rome, I believe, a statue of, but they don't actually quote what he said, just like they have a statue of Jesus, and they don't quote what he taught and said. And so it's very important to understand what Jesus came for, what he taught, what he said, what the apostles did, that they preached repentance in very, very simple. They didn't preach infant baptism uh, and all that stuff, all kind of different baptisms. When you repent, you want to follow Jesus, you're baptized in his name. As uh, Jesus says in the, the book of Luke, it says, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, have you been baptized? Have you confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, then um, you're condemned. You know, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. So we're already condemned in our sins. Me, I'm already condemned. Everyone's, every one of us are condemned in our sin. But God wants to know if we're honest enough to admit that. And he sent the propitiation for your sin. He sent the atonement down for your sin. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. And so you actively, faith is an action. Faith is something that you do. Okay? Faith is something you actually act upon. And so if you hear the word of God, you hear you have to repent of your sin. You have to actively want to be forgiven. You have to ask God to be forgiven. And it's a once in a lifetime thing. Jesus wasn't crucified every week over and over again. Jesus was crucified once for all time for the sins of me and you. And it's a choice that we have right in front of us. Every single human being who's alive, ever lived on the earth for 6,000 years. Because if you read the prophets, they all prophesied that this uh, man would come, the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, all the way back to Enoch, all the way back before that, Genesis 3, right? God even promised a deliverer, a saviour, hallelujah. It even says, what is it, Cain and Abel. God, God said, give me an offering. And Cain gave an offering of vegetables and fruit and things like that to God. And then Abel went away and got a lamb and sacrificed it to God. And that was accepted. Why is that? Because that's a future uh, prophecy about God himself giving us his son. I mean, God didn't even withhold his own son for, for, uh, to redeem human beings. He didn't even withhold his own son. That's how much he loves us, to wrap your mind around that. I mean, would you give your son as a sacrifice to redeem uh, your enemies? It, you, it, would you? I mean, that, I mean, Jesus was Jewish, right? And so, yes, he was Jewish. So God, God gave his son he came as a Jew, and that sacrifice redeems Muslims, redeems Christians, atheists, agnostics, whatever. If you're an enemy of God, if you hate God, God still sent his son to die for you. And still on that, that offering is still there. And all we have to do is just acknowledge God, what he did. Because it says in the Bible that you cannot please God without faith. You cannot please God without faith. And so it's like your friend telling you a story and just turning around and saying, well, there's no evidence of that. I don't believe that. How do you think they're going to feel? They're not going to feel very nice. So we've got to take Jesus on his word. Hallelujah. That's what we've got to do. Take Jesus on his word. Don't take me on my word. Check these things in the Bible for yourself. In the King James Bible for yourself. Hallelujah. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. Every single one of us needs saving. Hallelujah. Only God can see worth in you. Maybe humanity has rejected you. Maybe your own family, whatever situation it is. We've all got rejections and all of that. You know, this world doesn't have use for certain people. Just as the Nazis did in the Second World War. They just, they killed the, the Jews, the Gypsies, all the spastics, the people in wheelchairs, just threw them into the fire through the number of us. I can't think of any use for you. But that's, that's not what God's going to do. God loves us. God has a purpose for your life. 
God already saved your soul. All you need to do is believe. All you need to do is believe and confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And follow Him. And be baptized as the Apostle Peter said. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. cities around the Dead Sea area, that's why it's called the Dead Sea, because it's a place that was very, very sinful at one time. At one time there were fish in that sea, there were animals running around and birds were flying around. Even if you go out there now, around the Dead Sea, there's nothing there, there's no fish there, there's no birds flying around, hardly any animals to be seen, because what happened the one time that these cities sinned before God and they didn't repent they didn't repent hallelujah you need to repent hallelujah and this is why God left that as a testimony for all generations um, he left that as a testimony so that we can visit that area and see that that five cities were in fact destroyed by the wrath of God we can see for ourselves. We don't need to say, well, is there life after death? There's plenty of people who have had testimonies of dying, seeing what hell is like. Because unless you have Jesus, that's where we're all going. We're going to hell. It doesn't matter if you're the best religious person in the world. You're going to hell without the blood atonement that Jesus Christ provided at the cross of Calvary. That's a fact. Many people have got that testimony. They died. They were good people, they were, they, they were good people, you know, they were like nice people and they ended up going to hell because they, they didn't uh, seek Jesus, they didn't want to understand who Jesus is and what he did for them on the, on the cross at Calvary. There's Catholic priests in hell, you know, there's Muslims in hell, there's Jews in hell, there's atheists in hell, all wondering why they're there because in their own eyes they're like, well, what did I do wrong? Well, you didn't repent of your sin, you didn't see God, there's no excuse, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. And he's also the high priest who actually intercedes for your sin. When you confess your sin to Jesus, it's dealt with, 
Hallelujah. That's it. You know, the guilt and shame that's associated with whatever sin it was you were into is taken away in the cross at Calvary. Hallelujah. Some of us need, in fact, even King David, if you look at his life, he sinned a lot, but he repented a lot. He turned to God a lot. You know, the trappings of the flesh are everywhere you go. Every, everywhere you go, Satan has got us entrapped in the things of the world. But Jesus came to set us free. He didn't come to condemn us. What's the point of that? Hallelujah. Just through his holiness, through who he is, we understand that we need salvation. That we can't save ourselves. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't save yourself from the wrath of God. God is an all-knowing, all-seeing, omnipotent, omnipotent creator of the universe. Hallelujah. That he loves you very, very much. Yes, he has high standards, but he came to help you. Help you keep his commandments. Help you through life. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came. He came to give you eternal life. You know, Buddhists believe that when you die, that your soul goes out of your body and then you just get another body. Or you go into a cat or a dog or something like that. No, I mean, the, the, the major religions talk about heaven and hell. Hallelujah. And believe me, there's no carnal things in heaven, by the way. There's no, like, virgins in heaven and all that stuff. There's nothing. There's just God there, the angels. Even Jesus says, you know, that there is no, there is no, uh, what would you say, man and wife stuff goes on in heaven. And it's just they're all as they are in the spirit. Praise God. I mean, God gave us that gift, men and women, that gift so we could produce children. Hallelujah. That's why. And and when I hear arguments about people that are homosexual and gay, and they say, well, it's, it's a gene that you just have. You know, you inherit it from your parents. Now, believe me, if your parents were gay, they wouldn't have had you. <laughs> Praise God. It's just logic. Psalms, when King David wrote the Psalms, he wrote to the one who sits between the cherubim. And that's what Jesus is. He's sitting among the high rank holy angels right now, uh, interceding for you. If you know him, if you confess him, Jesus says, I will confess them, their name to the Father on the day of judgment. If you don't confess Jesus Christ, if you're ashamed of him, you know, you think he's just this a sort of rejected carpenter. You don't understand who he is, what he did for you on the cross. You're going to be lost. You're going to be lost, my friends. You probably already are lost. But, you know, talking spiritually here, you know, talking spiritually, who, who are you in God's kingdom? Jesus said, if you do and teach God God's commandments, you're called great in God's kingdom. If you do and teach them, and also Jesus said, if you uh, break one of these commandments, you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. If you break one of them and teach men so, you're least in God's kingdom. Maybe a lot of Christians want to be least in God's kingdom. But Jesus taught that through faith in him, you know, Romans 3.31, Hebrews 10.16, all these verses, that through faith in the Son of God, we were able to keep the commandments of God. That's one of the signs that we're born again, if we need a sign. But if you, you know you're born again if you receive the Spirit of God. But it's very important you, you test out what spirit that is. Does that spirit testify about the great works Jesus did for you on the cross? Does he testify that he raised on the third day? He sits at the right hand of God. Does he testify that you've been given power through Christ? of every evil thing that Satan does in this world, including illness and disease and rejection and hatred and wickedness and all these things. Jesus sits above all on the throne in heaven. It's actually called the mercy seat that Jesus sits on. The mercy seat of God, hallelujah. How long will his mercy last for? You know, Jesus says that in the days of Noah, 
um, man were given 120 years to repent and turn to God and acknowledge his messenger who at that time was Noah. Noah was God's messenger at that time. And they all laughed at him and they said, well, um, you know, God isn't going to destroy the, the world. Things are just going to continue as they are. And they just laughed at Noah. But sure enough, when the rain started coming down, all the people, when they saw Noah in his ark and all the animals in the ark, they ran to the ark to see if they could get on the ark and then the reply was too late. So don't let that be you. Jesus Christ is our ark. He's the one whom we must uh, be in. And, you know, there's going to be a rapture at some point in the future. Hallelujah. But the most important thing is that you seek God now, and if you do that properly, seek who Jesus Christ is, and then understand who he is and what he did for you on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. free somebody's got to pay a ransom for you you ever been in that position you've been in debt you know you needed help in your life and somebody just came up and paid your debt or you know defended you in some way you're going to love that person Jesus says those who are forgiven much love much hallelujah I mean even Jesus says indeed you know the tax collectors and those who are hated in society and disrespected in society. Yes, he said prostitutes and all these. If they repent in, of their sin and follow God and just ask God to wash them clean through the, the blood of the Lamb means that you inherit God's kingdom. Nothing that you can do, hallelujah, can actually merit a heaven for yourself. Nothing that you can do can merit heaven. Yes, I believe if you're a Christian, you have to be obedient to the Word of God. Well, not have to be, but it's something you choose to be. If somebody set you free from all your pain, rejection, guilt, debt of sin, you're going to want to obey that person because I know I do. You know, the flesh sometimes gets in the way, as the Bible says, but, you know, when we're born again, we receive grace. We receive grace. We don't receive religion, like a set of statutes that you have to keep. You know, even the Apostle Paul says that you should pray without ceasing. How can you possibly do that in the flesh? A man must be born again. When you receive the Spirit of God, you hear the things of God. It even talks about in the book of Corinthians that you shall speak in new languages, heavenly languages, angelic languages even languages of, of the earth, that you can be given understanding of these things. Hallelujah. You know, when I was born again over 20 years ago, probably it took me about two or three years to speak in tongues, realize I had that gift as a proper gift of God. Hallelujah. And then as a gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, all these good things. You have all power. All things are given to Jesus Christ. All power in heaven and earth are given to him. Don't doubt who Jesus Christ is. Do, don't doubt for a second who he is. He's your only saviour. Hallelujah. He's the only one who died for your sin. The only one who really cares for you deep down. Loves you even more than your parents, your spouse, anything. Hallelujah. God loves you and Jesus died for your sin. Accept him into your life. every sin you've ever done the power of Jesus blood pays for it all but not only that to give you eternal life most importantly to give you eternal life through his spirit through his name there's power in the name of Jesus there's power in the blood that we shed at the cross of Calvary again Jesus didn't come to just give us religion 
No, it's all I keep to give us eternal life. Life in abundance. Hallelujah. And he didn't give us power to sin. He gave us power to live our lives according to God's will. Hallelujah. And the fact that if we're... Yeah. Well, Jesus died for every addiction, alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, all of these things. Jesus came to take these things away from you. Because these addictions are going to get in the way in your life. They're going to get in the way of your development. They're going to get in the way of your God's plan for your life. Hallelujah. And so, you know, praise God. Jesus loves your soul very, very much. He died for your sin. God, Jesus Christ said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, which is money and taxes and that kind of thing, but give to God what is God's, and what belongs to God is, yes, it's your life, thank you very much, God bless you, what belongs to God is all your honor, all your thanksgiving and praise, men don't deserve praise, women don't really deserve praise, men don't deserve praise, God deserves all your praises, all your thanksgiving, hallelujah. Very important. Give thanks and praise God, the creator of the universe. Don't give thanks to the universe. Give thanks to God who created the universe. Hallelujah. Praise his name. His name is above all names. What is God's name? Every name has a meaning. Hallelujah. Your name, Bob, has a meaning. Robert. I know God's name, yeah. Well, Israel, Israel was the name given to Jacob. That means to wrestle and overcome. That's what Israel means. Ishmael. Well, Ishmael isn't the name of God, and it wasn't. Uh, no, it wasn't the name of God. Ishmael is not the name of God. No. Do you, do you know what Ishmael means? No, it's not. Ishmael is a different name from Jesus. It's a different name. So there you go. No, God's name is not Ishmael. God's name, uh, Jesus, Yeshua, means deliverer and saviour. That's what, that's what Jesus' name means, deliverer. He who came to deliver us from our sins and who came to save us. Who came to save our soul from death and hell. Talking about spiritual death and hell. Hallelujah. There's a physical death and there's spiritual death as well. You know, sin brings both. Sin brings spiritual death and physical death. But we need to be revived. Jesus said you need to be born again. Hallelujah. That's where you need to be. Jesus says no man enters into my Father's kingdom unless they're born again. In fact, it is Jesus' kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus said all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Don't doubt for a second who Jesus Christ is. There's already millions of Hindus when they read the Vedas and they talk about the Prajapati sacrifice. Jesus was the only one who did that. The chief of the gods sent a part of himself to die for the sins of his people. That's why so many Hindus, they, they're born again. They follow Jesus Christ as well. Don't think it's just the Bible. Hallelujah. No. No, no, no. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who wants to be born again? Anybody want to be born again? Nobody? Got to be born again to enter into God's kingdom. Even if you're Jewish, even if you're Muslim, even if you're Christian, even if you're atheist, it doesn't matter what religion you are. Jesus said a man must be born again to enter into his kingdom. It's nothing funny. Even Nicodemus said, how can a man again enter, in, enter into his mother's womb? How is that possible? Because Nicodemus was thinking in the flesh, just like we all think in the flesh, things of the world. Jesus was talking about this, the birth from above of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Give him a chance in your life. Give Jesus a chance in your life. 
You want a taste of, of, of the, the, the Lord as good as it says in the Psalms. Taste of Him. Taste of His power. Taste of His Spirit. Hallelujah. Let me just read out a few Bible verses. Okay, in the book of Isaiah it says, this is talking about Jesus Christ, just so that you can get to know him a little bit more. It says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, and the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says in the Bible that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. If you want to actually become wise, not in your own eyes, but if you really want to attain wisdom, start fearing God. Start understanding that your life doesn't belong to yourself or someone else, then you in fact were created by God, and uh, uh, the very least you can do is give God your life as Jesus gave you his life, because that blood that we shed at the cross atones for your sin. So all you need to do is just give your life back to God, as Jesus gave his life for you, and ask him to be your Lord and Savior, and then his spirit comes into you. The Holy Spirit comes into you, and it says you'll be sealed unto the day of redemption. Those who confess me before men, I shall confess them before my Father and the heavenly angels. Those who are ashamed of me, they, those who do not confess Jesus Christ, I, I won't confess them before my Father and the heavenly angels. So that means that there's no salvation but through Jesus Christ. You can be through religion. You know, you can get a bit of benefit from it. You might feel better about yourself. They might give you things to do. Face a certain direction and then pray this prayer. Personally, I, 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 you know, Jesus didn't come to bring religion into the world. He came to basically destroy the works of Satan. He came to destroy religion. And he came to give us relationship with God. Relationship with God. That's what Jesus came to bring. 